Welcome guys. Uh, so in this presentation, uh, we'll talk about the pathophysiology as well as the cross section of the of the of the long bone, of course, because you know that osteomyelitis actually is mostly mostly affect children. So we're going to talk about the long bone because the bones that are actually affected in children are the long bones. So let us assume that um, this is the long bone. Let's assume that this is the long bone. Okay. So you know that uh, actually the long bone of a child is that uh, we have got what we call as this plate, and this plate is the growth plate. Okay. This plate, it is what we call as the epiphyseal plate. Okay. So this one's the epiphyseal plate okay and here we have the epiphyseal epiphyseal plate okay now when you look at this bone the long bone this is the compact bone okay and in this compact bone we have got a, uh, a cavity okay in this compact bone we have a cavity okay so this is the cavity of this compact bone so this cavity it is what we call as the medullary cavity okay this is the medullary cavity so this is what the cavity it's what we call as the medullary cavity okay this is the medullary cavity and this compact bone is what we call as the diaphysis okay uh, this is the diaphysis okay and this one is the sponge bone, which we call as the epiphysis. Okay. Epiphysis, as well as this one is also called as the epiphysis. Okay. Uh, so now when you look at the bone, we say that the bone, it has a, a layer or a membrane that is actually surround this bone. And this one, it protects the bone from infection. So that membrane... It is what we call as the periosteum, and this periosteum, it is loosely attached to the bone, especially in children. Okay, it is loosely attached to the bone in children. So this one is what we call as the periosteum. Okay, this is the peri periosteum. So now when you look at the bone, we said that the bone, it has got the blood vessels, the, vest, the arteries that actually supplies uh, blood to this part of the bone. Okay. So this one, the one that I'm actually uh, drawing in green color, this is the metaphysis. This is the most important in osteomyelitis for you to understand. Okay. You will know why. This is the metaphysis. So we say that this bone, it has got the blood vessels, okay? It has got the artery that brings blood to this bone. So there's a foramen here, okay? The foramen just means that a wall, okay? We have a foramen, and this foramen, it is called as a nutrient foramen. Nutrient foramen. So within this nutrient foramen, we have got the, art the artery that brings blood, okay? And we also have the vein, okay? So the vein, I'll use the black color. Okay? So now what actually happens is that this nutrient artery, it, it, when it reaches here, it will actually going to divide where we have the descending artery, okay? As well as the, as, uh, the ascending artery, sorry, and the descending artery. So now, this ascending artery, it's going to give branches to this metaphysis where the nutrient as well as the oxygen is going to come to this side, okay? So now, this ascending artery, it will give branches to this metaphysis, okay? It will give, it will have blood vessels. These blood vessels will be getting or taking the nutrient as well as the oxygen to this metaphysis. As well as this descending artery, it will be taking as well nutrient oxygen to this metaphysis. Okay. So you know that if 
we have got the blood, uh, the, the arteries, we will also have the veins. So these arteries, they will have the veins, okay? They will be veins, that the arteries are draining, okay? And this vein, it is what we call as the nutrient vein, okay? Like this, okay? So, uh, we are saying that it's coming like this, okay? Through here and here. So now what actually happens is that this is how, uh, at this point, the... So now what we are saying is that, uh, you know that these are arteries in, uh, in, in red and in black we are saying that these are veins, okay? So the artery that actually brings oxygen to this metaphysis, it is the nutrient artery, okay? Nutrient artery. And we also have the nutrient vein, okay? Nutrient vein. So, since we have, read, since we have talked about the, the structure of the bones, that now how does osteomyelitis actually occur? So now, we we'll use a green color to say if infection is, is in this artery where we say that the most commonest root is hematogenous. So if bacteria it is in this artery, this bacteria is going to pass through the nutrient foramen, goes, comes here. Once it comes here, first before we talked about that, let me just talk about the blood uh, the blood supply as well. So this descending artery and the ascending artery. They are supplying the cortex, they are supplying the, the bone cortex, okay? About two-thirds of the blood is actually being supplied to the bone cortex. Then we also have the blood supplying here. Even the periostrium, it is also supplying the bone cortex, okay? So now, the bone actually, this cortex bone, okay? When you look at this cortex bone here, here at this cortex bone, we have got pipe-like structures. And these pipe-like structures, they are running horizontally. And these are what we call as osteons, okay? So, for example, let me draw an osteon here. We have got pipe-like structures that are running horizontally. And these pipe-like structures, they are what we call as osteon. So, for example, this is one osteon. There are multiple osteon that are actually here, okay? So inside the osteon, we have got a tunnel. So this one is an osteon, okay? Uh, osteon. Um, osteon, like this. And then inside the osteon, we have got a tunnel, okay? Or a way. And in that canal, or that canal, it is what we call as Harvesian canal. Inside this osteon, we have a canal, which we call a C, Havageni canal. Okay? Uh, Havageni canal. So, into this Havageni canal, that is where we have uh, blood uh, arteries, the, the blood vessels. We also have the nerve. Okay? We also have the, the vein that is actually passing, passing through this Havageni canal. So let us assume that uh, we draw multiple osteon here. So this is one osteon, okay? We also have another osteon, okay? Another osteon. So remember that we have these blood vessels, okay? That are actually supplying the, bo the bone cortex. And inside this aversion canal, we have got the arteries, okay? But I'm just going to draw it very much further so that you can actually get a picture very well. So now, um, let us uh, look at this one here. Okay. I'll rub some of the weights. Let us cut. We cut here a cross section. Just we get, just get the upper piece. Okay. So now, so now we have just drawn the rough diagram of this where we have cut here. And then we have drawn it here. So we are saying that uh, inside here at the bone cortex, we have got what we call as the osteon. So for example, we say that this is one osteon. Okay. We have another osteon here. There are multiple osteon here. And this osteon, they have got uh, what we call as Havesian canal. 
inside. We have the canal where the blood vessels as well as the nerves, that's where they are passing. Okay. So we say that the, um, there's a nerve okay, inside there and there's also a blood vessel. This blood vessel, it's supplying the bone. Okay. Then remember that we said that the bone cortex it is also supplied with blood vessels. And we said that the periostrum is also supplying. So now, this canal that are coming vertically, these, they are connecting this, uh, like this, they are connecting. The blood vessel that is coming from this ostium, they are connecting like this, with this canal. Okay? This is a vision canal. And this blood vessel, or this canal that is coming vertically, it is what we call this one. It is what we call as a Voxman canal. Okay? This is what we call as Voxman. Okay? Now, uh, looking at this bone, okay? Looking at this bone, so we are saying that if a microorganism actually comes to this side, Staphylococcus aureus, it comes through the nutrient artery, once it reaches here on top where we have the metaphysis, blood flow here it is slow, okay? The blood flow, it is very slow. And the blood actually loves to push, to bump into the walls of uh, this uh, metaphysis. So what can actually happen because of blood being stasis on top here is that the bacteria is going to stick and stay here. So once the bacteria stick and stays here, it's going to call up an immune response, okay? You know that in the artery, that's where we have got the neutrophils, okay? So the neutrophils are going to come to this site as well as macrophages later. So once macrophages come to this site, these macrophages, they'll start engulfing the bacteria. You know that the functions of macrophages is to engulf the bacteria. So if it starts engulfing the bacteria, you know that, of course, if bacteria stays here, it will start proliferating. Okay? So when macrophages come, some bacteria are going to be engulfed and die with macrophages inside. Some will be live. Okay? So now what will actually result? There will be pus here. So once pus occurs at, on top of this, where we, have, where we have the metaphysis, okay? Where we have the metaphysis, this pus, it won't cross and cause uh, and reach here where we have the joint and result in septic arthritis. Why? Because of this epiphyseal plate. This epiphyseal plate, it will prevent the pus from crossing. And the blood vessels that are actually supplying this epiphyseal, this ep epiphysis, they are not connected with the, uh, the blood vessels that are supplying the metaphysis. Okay. So now once pus accumulates here, where is it going to go? Where is it going to go, sorry? This pus to start, uh, let's use the pus as, uh, as green color. So this pus, it will start falling. Okay, pus is going to accumulate because it will have uh, dead bacteria, live neutrophils, uh, macrophages. So it will make pus to accumulate. Okay, once pus accumulate, this pus, it will start dropping. Okay, into this canal, into this aversion canal. So if pus accumulate here, what actually happens? Remember that in this Havasian canal, that's where blood vessels are. We have uh, blood vessels that are inside. Okay. Even this Voxman, there will also be pus. Okay. Because the pus is coming like this. Okay. So now what actually is going to happen? The pus, it will also pass through this Voxman, which is coming from the periostrium. Okay. And cause what we call as the sub periostral abscess. Because of the pass which is coming through the voxman, or sometimes the pass may just break the bridge of the cortex bone. Okay? It may break the cortex bone and cause what we call as the sub periostral abscess. Sub periostral abscess. Okay? So we are saying this is uh, the periostrium. Okay? So now. When you look at it, if we say pus, pus will come out maybe through here and result into what we call as the sub-periostal abscess. So it will create, um, so this is what we call as the sub-periostal abscess. So the abscess is going to form here. 
So once the abscess forms, what actually is going to happen? Remember that in this Havesian canal and in the Voxman, that's where we have got blood vessels. That's where blood vessels are running. So these blood vessels, they are going to be compressed. So if blood vessels become compressed, meaning there is no blood that is going to come to this side of the bone. And this side of the bone, it will become dead. Okay? This piece of the bone, because it's not connected to any uh, blood vessels, so it will become dead. Okay? So I'll rub this so that you are able to see. Okay? So this piece of the bone, it will become what? Dead. Okay? So this is going to become dead. So if this becomes dead, what actually happens? This is now where we call that osteomyelitis becomes chronic. So because of the, remember that this is dead, and because of the subperiosteal abscess, because of this abscess, this abscess is going to start stimulating the cells that are found in the periosteum. In the periosteum, we have got cells. And the type of cells that, so the types of cells that we have along this periosteum, they are called mesenchyma, okay, mesenchyma osteoprogenitor cells, okay, the, we have the cells here, these cells they are called mesenchyma osteoprogenitor cells, so these cells, because as they pass, this pass is going to start stimulating the cells, so once the cells they are stimulated, these mesenchyma osteoprogenitor cells, they are going to convert, okay? The mesenchyme osteoprogenitor cells, they are going to convert into osteoblasts. The osteoblasts, these are bone-forming cells, okay? So the osteoblasts, they are going to form a bone, okay? So there will be a new bone that will be formed, and this bone is going to have a sleeve, okay? It will protect, uh, let's say, this is the new bone. Let's use a different color because let's use a different color and let's use red. So this is the new bone that has been formed and this new bone is going to have a sleeve that will be protecting this dead piece of the bone as well as the subperiosteal abscess. So this new piece, this bone that has actually been formed by the osteoblast it is what we call as the involucrium, okay? This is what we call as the involucrium. I'm going to rub some other names, okay? Oh. Okay. So this is what we call as the involucrium. So this bone that has actually been formed, it is called as the involucrium. So now what is happening? This involucrium is protecting this subperiosteal as well as the dead piece of the bone. This dead piece of the bone, it is what we call as the sequestrium. So this dead piece of the bone, it is what we call as the uh, sequestrium. Okay, Sequen so this is the sequestrium. And this is the involucrium. Now, what is happening? Okay, osteomyelitis is now chronic. Okay, so once pus accumulates here, this pus it will keep on keep on compressing this uh, uh, periosteum as well as the involucrium. And this pus, in some stages, it's going to break or make a tunnel and opening here. Okay. And this opening which is going to be formed, it, will, it is going to be allowing this pass, okay? It will allow this pass to become out, to be coming out through this opening. And this opening which has been formed, it is what we call as the cloica. Okay? So pass, you know, it will be coming from this side as well as this side. So this opening, it is called as a cloica. So this opening, it is a cloica. Okay? So now what is happening? The pass is coming from the subperiosteal abscess as well as in this sequestrium. Okay? 
and in some cases you're going to see that the patient is having pus which is coming out from the skin okay sometimes pus comes out from the skin so from the cloaca it will form again another passage okay there will be another root okay and this root it is a root where you see that pus is coming out from the skin i'm sure you have seen the patients who have got osteo chronic osteomyelitis they actually have pus and this pus it is coming out from their skin so this uh, this passage that has actually been formed from the cloaca up to the outlet of the skin it is called as a sinus okay this is the sinus okay so this is the sinus okay so this sinus it will actually be allowing the pus to be coming out from the skin okay so once pus start coming out from the skin now you will see that outside the skin outside the skin is that we have got cells okay we have got cells which we call as squamous, uh, squamous epithelium cells. So these squamous epithelium cells, sometimes they will start growing inside this sinus. The squamous epithelium cells, the ones that I'll draw in red color, they are found outside the skin surface. So these cells, they will start growing inside. Growing inside. And if these cells... Uh, colonize this sinus and this sinus becomes epithelialized meaning that this outlet it is going to remain a permanent outlet okay it won't close on its own so this is a brief pathophysiology of osteomyelitis so just a quick uh, review let us do a quick review of the pathophysiology so the uh, the first one was bacteria entering through this nutrient artery then it can go through the ascending artery or the descending artery if it goes through the ascending artery it will reach here at the uh, metaphysis at the metaphysis blood flow it is very stasis so the bacteria is going to stay here and once the bacteria stays at this site it is going to start multiplying if it multiplies it will initiate an immune response meaning neutrophils are going to come to this site as well as the macrophages once they come to these sites that they are going to engulf this bacteria and there will be dead live neutrophils with bacterias, others who are going to have live bacterias, which is going to lead to exodate formation or pus formation. If pus forms at this site, we say that this pus at this cortex bone, this cortex bone, we've got pipe-like structures which are called osteons. And inside this osteon, we have got what we call as Havasian canals. So this pus it's going to drop into this Havasian canal. Sometimes the pus is going to break the bone cortex and form subperiosteal abscess. Okay. So once the pus comes into this Havasian canal, it's going to start compressing the blood vessels that are found in this Havasian canal. And if those blood vessels becomes compressed, uh, if those blood vessels, if these blood vessels in the aversion canal become compressed, this piece of the bone is going to undergo necrosis, meaning it will die off. Once it undergoes necrosis, this piece of the bone, it will be called the sequestrium. Okay, sequestrium. So there will be sequestrium formation. Then the subperiosteal, the abscess which is in the periosteum, it will start stimulating the cells which we are calling as the mesenchyma osteoprogenitor cells. These cells, once they are stimulated, they are going to convert into osteoblasts. Then the osteoblast, they are going to form a new bone, which we, which we said here, that this new bone that is going to be formed, it will have a sleeve. And this new bone is what we call as the involucrium. Okay? So there will be involucrium formation, but... Even if the involucrium has been formed, this pus, it will still compress and push through the involucrium and form another outlet which we are going to call as the cloaca, which one, which was here. Then there will also be another outlet from the cloaca up to the skin outlet, which we are calling as the sinus. 
So this is the brief three physiology of the osteomyelitis. But do not forget that if these squamous cells, the squamous cells that are found on the skin, if they start growing inside the sinus, and this sinus becomes coronalized, meaning that this sinus will not close on its own, it is going to become permanent. So this is a brief physiology of osteomyelitis pathophysiology. Uh, in the next presentation, we're going to discuss about the management and the signs and symptoms of osteomyelitis. Thank you.